Good evening, guys, and welcome back to the classroom with Architect Mark. Tonight, what we're going to do is actually look through an OBS, uh, the OBS interface, and then talk about uh, basically how to move about there and get to know the program a little bit better or for the first time for most of you. And so let's very simple thing that we're gonna do right now. I did try it beforehand, so this should work this time, unlike before. So let's fire up the classroom and I will open up a new OBS instance because I'm currently using an OBS, of course, to record this thing. So we're opening another instance. You can see there it appeared all right so now we have our new obs and start the timer and begin talking about the program so the current version actually is uh 26.1 so what i'm using right now is actually outdated already but since i don't really need any of these I will skip updating for now, but when you download it from the site, obsproject.com, this will be the one that you will be downloading. As you can see, virtual camera is now available on Mac and then on Linux. So it's very good if you're using a Mac. So let's cancel out of that and then talk about what we have here in our view. So of course we have the, uh, menu bar up here file edit view pretty normal day-to-day uh, -day things uh, what you would take from this really is the settings area right here under file which also can be accessed over here to the bottom right settings area here but let's not fiddle up about with that for now. The main, the big part of the program, of the application is actually the program area. So whatever is on here, that will be recorded or broadcast if you were using this stream. Now, there is a studio mode over here that moves it into two panels you have the preview and the program this basically is like the presenter view in uh, powerpoint where anything you do in preview will not immediately be what is on the program so you can preview scenes here and then when it's ready and you are also ready you can either click this or transition it into the actual program so whatever is on here goes here right so that's just like uh, for example you were watching a weatherman and he was talking about something that needed immediate updating that's what you do here in preview and then when it's done the editor transposes it to the program area so that will be live so this will be the live area and this will be the preview area okay now on to the other more important parts of the program here we have a scenes sub window here this house has uh, basically scenes are basically groups of uh, content that you want to show and sources are the actual contents that you want to show and if you check out let's try clicking this ad right so we can't see we'll uh, make this smaller Oops. a little bit smaller so you can see all right so when we click on 
add source, you can see that there is a lot of things that you can actually put in your uh, OBSC. So you have audio input, audio output, a browser. Uh, this basically chooses among known browsers. <clears throat> There's a list inside there. A color or yeah, a solid color or maybe the color bars you can put here. Display capture. This basically means a part of your screen or the entire screen. So it depends on the resolution that you have. For example, if we try to uh, choose display capture right now, the entire 4K screen will be uh, shoved into this preview here. And it will be uh, anchored to the upper left position. So it will be four times that like that and you can move it around so you can actually uh, focus just on a part of your screen using uh, display capture now game capture looks at what's currently running and identifies uh, a possible game title and it will capture everything that is on the frame that you're supposed to see when you're gaming and so basically it's a, it's a specialized capture for games. Each of these have settings within them. So uh, it's, not, it's not as simple as, for example, here the next one are images. You can actually exert some control over that image when you put it into the uh, into the program, to the live program. You have image slideshow. Controls over here are mainly for how they move about. Media source, you can call it, you can call like a, a video or an audio file. Uh, you can call it up while you're uh, playing or streaming or recording, you can call up a media source. And then scenes, uh, other scenes that you might have created can also put in a sources, uh, text. Uh, it's basically for titling, but you'll more than likely create titles outside of this program and then just import it as, a, as an image. But there is also some control that you can exert over text that is generated within OBS. Like for example, if you want a countdown, I think this would be one of the uh, ways to go about it. Apart from putting in a plugin because the OBS works with a lot of plugins and those really help over time uh, make things faster or for example if you want to virtualize a sound system you can do that also via plugins uh, next is a video capture device now this is the these are basically talking about all types of uh, cameras that are connected to your computer at a particular time so for example if we try to click that right now it will probably see uh, all the cameras that are in the uh, windows devices under imaging category so that will include the obs virtual camera because it has seen that before uh, the integrated webcam and then the adapted uh, GoPro which it will call a USB video so it depends on whatever capture card you have the naming that will uh, appear here 
Next, we have a window capture, which is basically uh, any window that is active or present at the time can be called a pun. Now, when when OBS when an OBS scene has a window capture on it, and it's a very specific program name. Uh, if you open that program while you're recording and it's on the scene, it will act automatically pick it up and display it depending on how it is uh, positioned prior to prior to how it was positioned the last time. So you don't need to actually uh, reposition it. But it's good to, it's good practice to know where you uh, snap it normally or you, you should be able to lock it to a particular uh, resolution or size that you want so that when it turns up in the live here on this side, uh, it's exactly what you expect it to be. All right. So those are sources. When you put any one of these in, uh, it will ask you for a name. And then you have, uh, you have to browse for it. For example, this is an image. And then okay, let's find something pretty simple. Okay. Use this. So, as you can see, the image loaded using a. Is it smaller? It's actually seven twenty p image. It's one half of the ten uh, eighty. Is it? No, it's not a half. It's uh, like three quarters or something. But even then, you can still stretch it out so that it fills up the entire screen. The resolution loss is not that high, so you can just do that. And as you can see, when you transition it to the program, it comes that. But still, you're working with the image preview right here so for example you uh, put something else like a text let's name it text and then uh, identify something like this is a text with so AA is enabled, that means it will be crisp all throughout. You can change the font. Uh, let's go something simple, like for example, okay, let's use a script and then make it not that big. Just so okay. So even if the content that you have is not really scaled to your liking, you can just scale it up within the program. And then uh, things here you can lock or make invisible if you want to. So invisible, something like that. All right, now the audio area here is basically when you put something here, like let's say the microphone that I'm using right now, uh, this is it. So Why is it not available to me here? Oh, 
All right. So as you can see, while I'm talking, it's uh, there are indicator lights that show me that it's being captured and uh, tuning out when it's uh, going to zero or what's this negative 60 just uh, zero is like the hearing threshold if it passes that it's already uh, beyond what the earphones can uh, transmit to you right so this is the mixer if you have several audio devices it will all come up here for example if you place a video here that video name would appear here and it will have a control set like this uh, this basically means that you can lower the volume of this particular um, input so that when it's when you're streaming it uh, you can lessen the impact on other people that are listening or if you don't didn't want them to listen to it at all you can just you know, mute it like that and it won't show up in your uh, stream or in your recording so we have a scene source audio mixer and then scene transitions you can select whatever you want uh, from a standard set of transitions here uh, the most versatile will be the, st the stinger but right now we, we just simple fades work for for us here so we just uh, leave it that fade and then the controls which will basically allow you to uh, tell obs whether to start or stop something so i suppose that would be the most basic in introduction that we can uh, show you with the obs software it's a very oh let's uh let's just input uh hmm, no it won't show up because i'm currently using it hmm, let's try it anyway there is another video capture device here which is the integrated webcam And let's see if I can, if we can pull it up here. Uh, USB video, we are using that in the main. This is what you're seeing. And then this is the alternate webcam. Hello there. So it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit slower than this one because it is the integrated one. And as you can see, you can scale it. Uh, put it anywhere you want and then that will be similarly interactive to what we're using over here at the uh, main OBS studio so as you can see there is quite the processing that's happening here and you can monitor all of that through this bar over here so it shows you the current recording time or the live time and the load that it's exerting on your computer so right now the obs that i'm using is showing five percent utilization and it's gonna be all good so i suppose that's it for the introduction to obs and we'll uh we'll see if we when we try to replicate this using a a single machine we will probably shoot it with the overhead or something right so this is a very short introduction to obs and i hope it uh, rattles your brain and op opens up several possibilities of actually creating a something like this tree or this uh, series and that's it i will see you guys again tomorrow take care
it's gonna be 2021 real soon so be excited for that also see you guys <laughs>